fresh off his first ever MVP award after finishing runner-up to Nikola Jokic in 2021 and 2022, Joel Embiid put up an awful Game 7 in an embarrassing 20-point loss to Jason Tatum and the Celtics. Don't get me wrong, the Boston Celtics are a very good team, but this has now officially become a trend, something I like to call the Joel Embiid dilemma. An inability for the league's current MVP to make the Eastern Conference Finals. Today in this video, we're going to dissect every aspect of this situation. Is this really Joel Embiid's fault? Are injuries to blame? Is it roster construction around him? And if you stay until the end, I'll say what I think about the future of Joel Embiid and this Sixers team. Let's begin back where it all started. After completely missing his first two seasons in the NBA due to a serious foot injury, Joel Embiid finally made his first playoffs with the Sixers in his fourth NBA season in 2018, finishing the regular season with a 52-30 and record and as the third seed in the Eastern Conference. Embiid suffered an orbital fracture that required surgery, and he missed the final eight games in the regular season and the first two games of their opening matchup versus the Miami Heat, which the Sixers took care of in five games. In the Eastern Conference semis, they matched up against a Kyrie Irving-less Celtics team led by 19 year old Jason Tatum. They ended up losing in five games, but there was so much hope. They played the Celtics very tough, and three of their four losses came by less than five points. Plus, that Celtics team took the LeBron Cavs to seven games. Joel Embiid was only 23 and in his first full season, and Ben Simmons as a rookie looked like a budding star alongside of him. The future was bright in Philly, and this was really just the beginning for this young core. In the 2018 2019 season, Philadelphia finished third again in the East with a similar record, and Joel Embiid took another leap forward, averaging 27 points. Point three points per game in the regular season. They also made in-season trades for Jimmy Butler and Tobias Harris. This team truly was made for a deep playoff run. There was so much hope in Philadelphia. After easily taking care of the Brooklyn Nets in the opening round, the stage was set. Kawhi's mercenary Raptors versus the process. The Sixers fought like hell in the series, and Embiid dealt with a ton of sickness throughout the series. After being up 2-1, to one, the Raptors came back and stole Game 4 on the Sixers' home court. After trading victories, it came down to a Game 7 in Toronto, and we all know what happens next. Is this the dagger? It was a heartbreaking defeat for Philadelphia, but the Raptors went on to win the finals, and this was the most talented roster we had seen to date. Joel Embiid was only 24, Ben Simmons only 22. The future was still bright. Unfortunately, a disgruntled Jimmy Butler left via sign and trade that offseason, and as much as that may have stung for 76er fans, they still had the dynamic duo of Joel Embiid and Ben Simmons, plus Tobias Harris was still a really good third option. They would be fine without him. And then the bubble year came. The Sixers were the sixth seed and were swept by the Boston Celtics. Ben Simmons didn't play due to a knee injury, and Embiid was battling a sprained ankle all series. Plus, the whole world was turned down by the pandemic. Nothing to worry about. Next year, when things get back to normalcy, things will be just fine. After firing Brett Brown and welcoming Doc Rivers to town, the Sixers finished as the top seed in the Eastern Conference in 2021. They were heavy favorites to at least make the conference finals for the first time in two decades. This was the year. They take care of business of Washington in the first round, giving them a matchup with 22-year-old Trey Young and the fifth seeded Atlanta Hawks. Joel Embiid did suffer a small meniscus tear in that Washington series, but he would play in all seven games of series, and he actually had a really good series, averaging 30 and 12. Up 2-1 to one over the Hawks, the Sixers blew an 18-point lead in the second quarter before going on to lose Game 4 by 3, but they had an even bigger collapse in Game 5, being up 26 in the second half before again losing by 3. The Hawks would go on to defeat Philly in Game 7 on their home court, and to me, this is when the Embiid problem low-key started. But the story wasn't about Embiid, and rightfully so. It was about the complete mental collapse of his counterpart, Ben Simmons. Simmons refused to live up to the moment throughout the whole series, including multiple fourth quarters where he just didn't take a field goal attempt. But it all came to a head in Game 7 with about 3 minutes left when he passed up on a wide open layup. It's a play that will be remembered forever and it's all anyone talked about in the off season. That Ben Simmons didn't show up, he was the problem. The scrutiny he received for his play in the series and that play specifically got to Ben Simmons' head so badly that he asked for a trade out of Philadelphia. And we all know this story, Simmons doesn't play until February when he gets traded to the Nets. Philly fans were ecstatic. Get Simmons out of here and let James Harden give Joel Embiid the counterpart he needs to reach an NBA Finals. Embiid was playing better than ever. The Sixers finished as the fourth seed in the East, but Harden had only played 21 games with this team, and 20-year-old Tyrese Maxey was having a fantastic season as well. They breezed past the Raptors, but Embiid again was dealing with injuries. His thumb was bothering him, and it was revealed later on that he had a torn ligament in it. He was also on the wrong end of a Pascal Siakam elbow in Game 6 that again fractured his orbital bone. 
The Sixers were again in the Eastern Conference semis, this time matching up against Jimmy Butler and the number one seed Miami Heat. Joel missed the first two games of this series due to the injuries he suffered against the Raptors, and the Sixers were in a steep 0-2 hole. They did battle to tie the series 2-2, but Miami was too much and finished the series in six. It was again another disappointing overall season for the Sixers, and Bede played through injuries again and was pretty bad numbers-wise, only averaging 19 points per game in this series. James Harden was 32 and not getting any younger. Tobias Harris was a shell of what he used to be the only remarkable bright spot on this roster was Tyrese Maxey, which now leads us through this brief history lesson into this season. Embiid had an otherworldly regular season, finishing with 33 points per game and winning his first ever MVP. He finally got it after two seasons of being runner up, after spraining his knee in game three versus Brooklyn, Embiid missed game one of the Celtics series, but the Sixers somehow stole this game anyway. This series overall just felt like a who wants it less kind of series to me. And in game six, up three to two with the ability to make a legacy defining series win over a very good Celtics team, Joel Embiid didn't touch the ball for the final four minutes of the game. In Game 7, the Sixers got boat raced in the third quarter, and it was all over. Joel scored 15 points on 5 for 18 from the field. Harden only had 9. And while, yes, Joel's knee was bothering him, the legacy had now been set in stone. Joel Embiid cannot win in the playoffs. Whether you personally think it's fair or unfair, an inability in six playoff years to make one conference final from a league MVP and a runner up in the previous two years has to mean something. I understand that we can go through every year like I just did and find some type of excuse outside of Embiid himself. In 2018, they were young. In 2019, they lost to the eventual NBA champions on a buzzer beater in game seven. In 2020, Ben Simmons didn't play and it was the crazy bubble year. In 2021, Ben Simmons disappeared and broke down mentally. In 2022, Embiid missed the first two games versus the Heat. In 2023, he sprained his knee and he battled through it. I 100% understand these excuses. I get that they're valid reasons, but I think at some point, given enough time, the ultra tier of superstars in this league, the top three to four players, find ways to win in the postseason. But when it comes to the case of Joel Embiid, we're not even talking about winning a ring. We're not even talking about making an NBA Finals. We're talking about making it to the conference finals three chances as a top three to four player in this league and he hasn't been able to get it done do i personally wish he had better luck with injuries absolutely but all i'm asking is to do it once just once according to espn stats and info he averaged 33 points per game in the regular season but only 23.7 points per game in these 2023 playoffs that's the single greatest drop in league history by that year's mvp and last year something similar happened he averaged 30.1 points per game in the regular season but only 23.6 points per game in the playoffs the common denominator for the sixers over these past six playoff appearances is joel Embiid. and when you're a superstar that can't win in the playoffs you need to be judged accordingly but by far the worst aspect about all of this is I have no idea where the Sixers can go from here. I don't know what they can do this offseason to become contenders again in 2023-2024. The Rockets are convinced James Harden is coming this offseason according to the Zach Lowe podcast. What can the Sixers do to improve the roster? I don't know. I will say losing the former rookie of the year and budding star Ben Simmons to a complete mental breakdown and then Jimmy Butler forcing his way out of Philly were two brutal blows to the roster construction around Joel. The Bucks are going to be back and just as good next year. Jimmy and the Heat have proven they're still contenders and the Celtics team may have the best entire roster in the NBA. Plus Joel Embiid's already 29 years old. He isn't getting any younger. Injuries have been a problem for a long time for him. Do we really think that suddenly stops as he gets north of 30? The bottom line for this video is that I have a love-hate relationship with Joel Embiid. On one hand, I love the guy. He's loyal to Philly, he's dealt with a bunch of teammate drama in his career, he's played through pretty bad injuries, and he's absolutely one of the best players in this league. But on the other hand, he can't win in the playoffs. And we can't continue making excuses for him, especially now that he's won an MVP. It's not just about 2023 though, it's also about his resume as a whole. He has to be better, he has to find a way to get it done. Other superstars do. Do I hope he figures it out? Absolutely. But in the meantime, I really do think there's an outside chance Daryl Morey blows it all up this offseason and trades Joel Embiid for the biggest haul we've seen in NBA history. Yes, bigger than the KD trade or the Rudy Gobert trade. What do you think about the Joel Embiid problem? Is it fair to criticize his failures in the playoffs? Or has he been dealt a hand that Giannis, Jokic, and others would fail to overcome as well? If you like this video, you'll enjoy the video I just did on why the Kevin Durant trade is way worse than we think and why I think it has the potential to be worse than the Rudy Gobert trade in the long run. We'll see you over there.